Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. Let go of negative thinking and stop living for the weekend with your host, Fran Excel. Welcome to the show. If you're new here, I am Fran Excel, Mindset Coach, and I'm helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can finally get out of your own way, do the things you want to do, and actually live a life that you really love. Who doesn't want that? So today we're going to be talking about overthinking, which is a huge problem. Um, I see it time and time again, um, especially in the entrepreneurial space. There are a lot of people who are constantly overthinking or worrying, whatever you want to call it. So today I'm going to give you some of my top tips to help you stop with that. There's a couple of coaching questions that that I used um, as an ex overthinker. Um, these really, really help. They're really practical. So I'll get stuck in. So overthinking is obviously such a huge source of unease, discomfort in your daily life. So it can affect your sleep, it can cause anxiety, it can cause depression, and pretty much always results in unhappiness, right? So it can also cause you to miss opportunities, stop you going after your dreams, and generally keep you stuck exactly where you are. It just makes life feel that much harder. And um, a great thing to remember when trying to stop overthinking or worrying is that your thoughts really do shape your reality and where your focus goes energy flows I know you hear it time again and often it's said in quite a woo sense but genuinely it's science <laughs> the way you think really does shape how you go about your daily life so you bring more of what you focus on into your life so you need to be focusing as much on possible as much as possible on the good stuff so can you think of a time where you've wasted a huge amount of time and energy overthinking something that might happen that never actually did? Can you think of a time like that? I can think of many, many, many times like that. So all worrying tends to be either focusing on things that have happened in the past or, you know, that you can't do anything about anymore or things that might happen in the future. So you can see how important it is to try and keep thinking in the now. So as I always say, awareness is the number one key to changing any behavior. So when you're catching yourself in that negative overthinking mindset, try a few of these to start help shifting your focus. So identify what actually causes you to overthink. Is it certain people that you're around? Is it certain situations that you're in? Um, is it circumstances? Identify what those triggers are and try and do less of it or limit your time surrounded by it, genuinely. But it's quite often when you can analyze who, who you're spending your time with. Actually, a lot of those people can cause us to overthink. They can cause us to have self-doubt, comparisonitis, all these different things that come up for us that are actually around people that we spend time with. So you need to start trying to limit your time with those people or approach those people differently so they can't make you feel that way. So that's number one. Identify what your triggers are and try and do less of it or limit your time surrounded by it. So these, these couple of questions are my absolute favorite thing. And this is what really, really turned it around for me. So always ask yourself, who is it helping to think this way? Who is it harming to think this way? And the last question is, can I control this? If the answer is no, please stop wasting your precious time. Genuinely, you get one life. Don't waste it worrying about something that you can't do anything about or hasn't even happened. There's no point. There really is no point. So can you control it? If you can't control it, there really is no point worrying about it at all so find an anchor thought or a little happy place in your mind again it sounds a little bit woo but the brain doesn't distinguish between reality and a dream or a visualization or anything along these lines this is why you'll see a lot of top performers practice visualizations a huge amount of top athletes practice visualization because your body and your brain behave physiologically as if 
the same thing is happening. So it's something really, really important. It's sort of defluffing that woo-woo for you on visualization and why it's so important. You'll often see um, Olympic sportsmen and things like that. They say, how did you do it? They're like, well, I just visualized myself winning. I just practiced every single day in my head. I knew I was going to win. So that's another one. So think of a memory when you were really, really happy and you felt completely carefree. So close your eyes and actually take yourself back there in your mind. Feel how it felt to be there. See what you saw. Smell what you smelled. Really try and be back in that moment. And if you really can't think of one, create your own. So there's a book by um, Shakti Gawain um, called Creative Visualization. And if you can deal with pink bubbles, it's actually an amazing amazing book because a lot of it it makes so much sense there is a little bit woo but it's an amazing book so definitely get that um but you can create your own sort of happy place in your head so is there a place that you know you feel calm and happy do you like being on the beach or by water um is it a tropical island a meadow in springtime you know whatever it may be for you that is your happy place that makes you feel calm and collected genuinely when you start overthinking take a little moment couple of minutes that's all it all you need is a couple of minutes to really like just breathe deeply and imagine yourself back in that moment and it will really really help you because you need to calm down your amygdala you need to calm down that fear response which happens when you're overthinking because what it does is it releases cortisol and adrenaline into your body which is really really bad for health in the long term but regardless it sort of you know raises your heart rate and your blood pressure it's not good for you at all you're stressed you know, and we all know what stress does. Stress accounts for 90% of all doctors, doctor visits every day. So you need to be thinking about this. <laughs> if you're going to overthink anything, overthink how to not be stressed. So remember that fear is just false evidence appearing real. Genuinely, it's as simple as that. It's false evidence appearing real. You feel like it's already happened. Just as I was saying with the visualization, it really does feel as if you're in the moment and that thing has already happened. You know when you play over in your head a conversation that you've got to have with someone and you feel your blood start to boil or say you're having an argument with somebody and you're playing it over in your head, you really start to feel as if that moment is already happening or you start to cry because your emotions have got so heightened because you're really putting yourself in that in that situation physiologically whether you're actually there or not so it's really really important to try and stop doing that so the next one is distract yourself this is an obvious one but one that so often gets overlooked what do you know makes you feel better sometimes allow yourself a little netflix why not but going for a run listening to happy songs, reading a book, whatever might distract you from that thing that you're overthinking, do it. Just do it. Whenever you feel that, you have permission to do these things that you think maybe you're wasting time or whatever. You need to shift that focus, and that's a great way to do it. Why not spend it doing something that you love? So next one, journal. This doesn't have to be a dear diary kind of thing. As you know, if you've been following me for a while, it's all about focusing on that positive. So when you really start to overthink and worry about stuff, write down three good things that have happened to you today and three things that you're grateful for. You may find it helpful to free flow the thoughts you're having just so you can get them out of your head and onto paper because when you're doing that free flow you really do allow yourself to sort of talk it through in your own head it's it's actually amazing i don't do it that often um but when i do do it you really do, you start at the beginning and you're ranting and you're irate and then by the time you get to the end you've talked yourself through because with journaling you're waking up the right side of the brain which is the creative side of the brain which is the problem solving side of the brain so genuinely when people are talking about journaling and things like that it is waking up the right side of your brain to be able to deal with your problem so think about that next time that you think ah i hate writing even if it's voice noting into your phone if you hate writing and that's not your thing that's still a form of journaling you can just rant into your phone and i promise by the time you've finished it and you've got all those thoughts out of your head and into the ether you will start to feel so much better so one of my favorites is also ask yourself will this will this matter in a year will this matter in a month will it matter in a week will it matter tomorrow will it matter three hours from now and the answer is normally no 
one of my favorite phrases is tomorrow's chip paper so if you're not from the UK <laughs> we used to get fish and chips in proper newspaper and the whole idea is like whatever today's news is is tomorrow's chip paper and I love that analogy because it really does make you think hang on okay yeah this feels big now this feels real now is it gonna matter tomorrow probably not okay so practice mindfulness is another one so like I was saying with your visualization that is a form of mindfulness but you can also just practice being in the now so it's all about um, being where you are so look around you Take in the sights, sounds, smells, anything. Try a mindful breathing technique or take a moment to literally just really, really look at what's around you. Um, what can you hear? How does the ground feel under your feet? Just give it a go because it sounds like it's, again, all these things sound like they're so woo-woo, but they're so not. They are all based in science. So I want you to, if ever you've listened to these tips and gone, ooh, rolled your eyes, Please just listen and give them a go because what have you got to lose at the end of the day? So that's the next one. And the last one is visualize a positive outcome. So we're back to the visualization, but this one's slightly different. So like I was saying, when you can get stuck in your head and you can, can start the emotions building up and things like that, this is a really good technique where actually you stop yourself thinking about the negative stuff that you assume is going to happen and actually visualize a positive outcome. So have that conversation in your head, but actually make it change the ending. You have the power to do that. And then when you change the ending, you'll calm down your brain, you'll calm down your nervous system and you'll be able to then approach a situation with a much better mindset, with a much calmer mindset. So just remember that a lot of this stuff just it goes on in your brain. And as Mel Robbins always likes to say, you're not a worrier, you have a habit of worrying and we can break habits. We know that we can break habits. It's, it's a really big thing. And I used to think that it was genuinely part of who I was, um, that I would overthink everything. I'd drive myself crazy. I would genuinely work myself up when nothing had even happened. And then it wasn't until I realized how much time I was wasting, hurting myself and only myself, that I managed to find ways to shift it, shift around. So this stuff really does work. It's just a case of retraining your brain. You can retrain your brain to do literally anything you want it to do. So please believe that and bear that in mind when you are getting frustrated with yourself and saying, oh, got to worry about everything. It's always the way. I can't help it. It's just who I am. It's not who you are. It's a habit you have. So thank you everybody for joining me. I will see you again next week. And until then, like this please hit subscribe and come join me in Fran Excel community on Facebook. Bye!